Hello and welcome to this lesson. Today I'm going to test your English vocabulary and see if you know these 15 confusing English words. Of course, I'm Jennifer from j4senglish.com and this channel is dedicated to helping you feel confident speaking English in public so you can take your career and your life to the next level. Now before we go any further, make sure you subscribe and hit that bell icon so you're notified every time I post a new lesson. Now let's get started with this lesson. Are you ready to see if you know these 15 confusing English words? So here's how this video is going to work. I'm going to show you a sentence and you're going to have two options and you have to decide which option correctly completes the sentence. Now I'll only show the sentence for a couple seconds. So make sure you hit pause, take your time to read it, to answer it, and then hit play and I'll show you the answer and I'll explain why that answer is correct. Are you ready to go? Number one, there were people at the party than I had expected. The answer is fewer. There were fewer people at the party than I had expected. And the reason is we use fewer with countable nouns. You can count how many people there are, but we use less with uncountable nouns. So I could say there was less rain. You can't count rain. There was less rain this year compared to last year. Number two, I'm just in the of a big project. And the answer is midst, midst. This is a tricky one simply because of pronunciation. When you hear this in spoken English, I'm in the midst of a big project. It's easy to confuse this with mist. And to be in the midst of something is simply to be in the middle of something. So I'm in the middle of a big project. Number three, wow, that shirt really, your hair. And the answer is compliments with an E. These two words sound exactly the same in pronunciation. It's spelling that is different, but they have different meanings. Compliment in this example is when one thing, your shirt, combines really well with another thing, your hair. Compliment with an I is when you say something nice to someone. I love your shirt. Thanks for the compliment. If you want to learn more about compliment and compliment, you can look in the description for a link on a video on that topic. Number four, that movie had quite an on me. The answer is effect. It had quite an effect on me. The pronunciation is very similar, effect, effect. There's a slight difference, but the spelling is important because affect is a verb and affect is a noun. And we need a noun. You know that because there's an article in the sentence. With the verb, I could say that movie affected me. If you want to learn more about affect and effect, you can look in the description for a link on that. Number five, Quizzes are a great way to your skills. To hone your skills. Again, similar in pronunciation, but the correct choice is hone. This is an expression to hone one skills. This is simply to improve one's skills. Number six, I didn't know at the party. I didn't know anybody at the party. Didn't is negative. In the English language, we do not like double negatives. 
you can only use one negative in a clause. And since I already have didn't, I can't use the negative nobody. I have to use anybody. Number seven, I don't like carrots. I don't like carrots either. Now, this is the same as number six because I don't, don't is a negative. Neither is also a negative, so we can't use it. We want either. I don't like carrots either. To use neither, I could say, you don't like carrots? Neither do I, neither do I. If you want to learn more about either and neither, you can look in the description for a video I created on this. And number eight, she has more she needs. She has more than she needs. Similar in pronunciation, than, then, but they're two totally different words. Than we use in comparisons, more than, less than, fewer than, comparisons. Then is an adverb, it's used in time references. First I'll eat lunch, then I'll go for a walk. Number nine, joining social clubs is, for all purposes, the solution to loneliness. For all intents and purposes. This is an expression in English, for all intents and purposes. This simply means in almost every situation, in virtually every situation. But when you say this at a natural pace, for all intents and purposes, for all intents and purposes, it sounds like intensive. Intensive is a word that people are very familiar with. Intense and is not something that people are familiar with, but the correct expression is intense and purposes. This is a very useful business or academic expression. It isn't really used in casual conversation too much. Number 10, we can discuss this after the meeting. We can discuss this further after the meeting. Further and farther both mean more. We can discuss this more in more detail after the meeting. We use further when we're talking about figurative and we use farther when we're talking about literal. For example, we need to walk farther, we literally need to walk more. We need to walk farther to see the waterfall. If you want to learn more about this, look in the description for a link on a separate video. Number 11, you can down here. You can lie down here. Lay and lie, they have the same meaning, but lay is transitive. It needs an object. For example, lay the baby down here. Lay the blanket down here. You lay something. But lie is intransitive, so there's no object. Lie down here. Lie yourself down here. Lie down here. Number 12, that sweater is too for you. That sweater is too loose for you. This one is confusing because of the spelling. Do I need one O or two? It's easy to forget. Lose with one O is the opposite of win. Did you lose the game? Did you win the game? Did you lose the game? Loose with two O's when we're talking about clothing is when it doesn't fit closely to your body. So this shirt I'm wearing is not loose. It fits closely to my body. But this sweater, for example, is loose. Number 13, we should worked harder. We should have worked harder. 
Now, this is a mistake that many native speakers make because in spoken English, we take have, which is the grammatically correct choice, but we reduce it. We say it quickly and it sounds like of. You should have. You should have. You should have worked harder. So sometimes native speakers forget that it's actually have and not of because that's what it sounds like in spoken English. So in spoken English, you can absolutely say you should have, you should have worked harder. But in written English, just remember that the correct choice is have. Number 14, I shouldn't have to the party. I shouldn't have gone to the party. Our verb here is go. The past simple is went and the past participle is gone. This structure requires the past participle, the third form of the verb. Yesterday I went to the party. I've gone to three parties this month. And finally, number 15, do you trust the most? Whom do you trust the most? Who and whom, it can be very tricky for students and native speakers to know the difference. Just ask yourself, do you need she or her? Do you need a subject or an object? She or her, he or him? I trust her the most. We need an object, not a subject, so you use whom. Who is your friend? She is my friend. In this case, we need a subject, so we use who. So how'd you do with this quiz? Share your score in the comments below. And if you got any wrong, don't worry. Just do some practice sentences and remember to look in the description because I shared many links to other videos that go into more depth on these confusing words. And if you found this video helpful, please hit the like button, share it with your friends, and of course, subscribe. And before you go, make sure you head on over to my website, j4senglish.com and download your free speaking guide. In this guide, I share six tips on how to speak English fluently and confidently. And until next time, happy studying!